Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and I'm here with two machines that look very different, but do largely the same work. Because we get a lot of questions about size and scale of our machines, we put our 728 next to the 1054 TV knee mill that we use every day here in our install room. If you're trying to get much of the performance of the big machine in a package that doesn't take up nearly this much floor space, the 728 VT is what you want to look to. Now the laws of physics still apply, so you won't be able to use a 370 pound machine to take the same cuts as a 3000 pound machine, but you'd be surprised at the capabilities of the smaller bench mill. In this video, we'll experiment with the 728 to see how large a cut you can take on a machine that fits just about anywhere. Let's get started. We'll start with some drilling operations. If positional accuracy of a drilled feature is important, you'll want to include a spot drilling operation to give your pilot drill a divot to follow. You'd be surprised how much a regular jobber drill can flex and walk without a good mark to follow. Next is our pilot drill. Now people have strong opinions about selecting a pilot drill size, and I do smile and nod politely as they evangelize that to me. The only rule I stick to is that the pilot drill should be at least a little larger than the web size of the final drill, and that's this dimension right here. And know that pilot drill selection in most applications doesn't have to be exact. You don't need calipers or magnifiers or your pocket calculator. You can literally hold the pilot drill up next to the final drill and look at it. The old icrometer, if you will. Honestly, sometimes my pilot drill selection is as simple as whatever's already in the chuck. Don't make it overcomplicated. Next is our final drill size. This is a three quarter inch drill going through 1044 steel and the 728 doesn't have a problem cutting a chip. It does have a problem at the end of the cut as the material stretches then work hardens that last couple of thousandths of the bottom of the hole. So if you need to drill a clean through hole with this larger drill bit, you will want to back your workpiece with a piece of scrap to support the back of the hole. Regardless, I'm kind of impressed that this small machine runs a relatively large drill bit at a fairly slow RPM. This is also where I'll mention that spinning drill bits sometimes look a little wobbly on video, even though they're running true in real life. I don't know why that is. Maybe the way that the frame rate of the video lines up with the rotation of the tool? I just wanted to head off any comments saying that our drill bits are running out, and also ask any videographers to comment and tell me why it looks like that. My apologies, I'm better at drilling holes than filming myself drilling holes. I do get questions about power tapping on our various milling machines, so let's try some on the 728. We did some smaller taps off camera, and suffice to say that quarter 20 and smaller works with no problem. I don't love power tapping too small because that's a recipe for broken taps and broken hearts, but you might be braver than me. This video is about really testing the limits of the 728, so we're going to go bigger than quarter 20. The tap drill for 5 16 18 is a letter H drill, so here we go. For our tapping operation, we do have a few threads in the top of the bore already because we had the tap slip in the drill chuck on the first take. Yes, I know you're not supposed to hold taps in drill chucks. I don't have a tap holder for an R8 spindle and I didn't want to buy one just for this shot. Call the machinist police. Make sure you tell them that my parallel isn't straight in this shot too. But the point stands that the 728 can power tap up to 5 16 18 in this alloy steel with this particular tap geometry. Can the 728 maybe do larger than 5 16 What about a letter P drill for a 3 8 16 thread? Can it? I'll lube it up really well to give it its best chance. And no, sorry, it stalls out but I think that's pretty good for a benchtop mill. For a tap this size and larger, I would recommend getting it started with the machine so you know it's straight, then finish it by hand. So we found our limits of power tapping on the 728 in steel. 5 16 all good. 3 8 get your tap wrench out. Next, we're gonna turn our test piece sideways and get into some facing cuts. We've got a two inch carbide indexable face mill, so let's spray some chips on our camera operator. We'll start with the 25 thou depth of cut, which is no problem. The machine powers right through with a pretty good feed rate. I don't have a DRO on this machine, so I can't put a number to it, but you can mark the feed rate down as pretty good. Nice surface finish too.
Next, we'll move up to 50 thou, which I think of as a good general rough and cut depth for a machine this size driving a tool like this. We get some nice curly blue chips, so life is still good. This video is about driving the machine until it protests, and it hasn't really protested yet, so we'll go further. Next up, we'll double it to 100 thou. So here we go. It makes more noise than before, and we've got more vibration than before, but the results are actually not bad. Nice chip, passable surface finish, and we're still plowing through at a reasonable feed rate. The machine's not complaining, but if you're taking a tenth of an inch off at a time with a bench mill, why didn't you just cut the original stock closer to the final dimension on the bandsaw? All right, let's get silly with it. Here's 150 thou. This is too big a cut on a bench mill in steel. I know because we made enough noise that someone came from the next room over to see what the heck we were doing. So if you want to take more than an eighth of an inch off at a time, you've got hearing protection, and you hate your neighbors, the 728 can do it without stalling. How about milling slots? We have a half inch, two flute end mill that we're gonna play around with and see how much noise we can make. We'll do our cuts in reverse order from before and start with the big cut this time at a quarter inch depth of cut, 250 thou. At this depth, it makes a lot of noise and a lot of vibration, but it hogs the material out when I ask it to. Yes, this is too big a cut and surface finish suffers, but it does the job without stalling. We'll step it down to 150 thou, which I think is a better depth of cut for roughing a half inch slot out. It vibrates quite a bit less and makes less noise, so I'm going to call 150 thou about the max I would recommend for cutting a half inch slot in steel on this 728. You could also use a four flute end mill, but note that in that case the slot will be oversized, which is why we did the demonstration with the two flute. But if you're roughing out a slot, then coming back and cleaning up each side with a finishing cut to dimension, go ahead and use a tool with more flutes. We turn our part one last time to try some side milling. This is a good general purpose end mill and we took a 50 thou cut in an inch of material. We had a bit of chatter so the surface finish wasn't great, but that's something that can be cleaned up with a lighter finishing pass. We didn't go more than 50 thou because I figured it would just make more and more noise until the end mill broke. I've broken enough end mills in my life without deliberately breaking them for YouTube videos, so this tool is spared for today. Let's call 50 thou the practical limit before any bench mill vibrates enough to start breaking tools. So there you have it. When it comes to drilling, tapping, facing, and milling steel, the 728 punches well above its weight. So if you don't have the room or the budget for a full-size knee mill, or you need a second manual mill in a busy shop that already has a knee mill, this machine is hard to beat. As always, 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel to see future videos where we test the capabilities of some of our machines. And if you have a 728, tell us in the comments about any inadvisably large cuts that you've tried. I promise not to void your warranty. I just want to hear the stories. Until next time, thanks for watching.